I've seen is I think sometimes people attach forgiveness with allowance, meaning mm-hmm. I'm never going to forgive so and so that did that to me because if I were to do that, someone else would do it to me. And I guess I'm getting where you're at, which I, my response to that has, has been no, no, no. Is you hold on to the resentment for what they did to you, you'll just mm-hmm. attract the next character that does right. that to you again. Right. So the, the, it's not even forgiveness. It's um, it's kind of s- awareness and self love. Which yes. the forgiveness just falls from that. It's not even an act. It's just right. you getting so clear with the idea that it doesn't matter what that person did. It's got nothing to do with them. Right. I, am I going to allow them in, in my business life anymore? No. Shit's about to go down. I'm feeling something in my spirit. Chats and Tats with Aaron Della Vadova. Hello, friends. Welcome back to Chats and Tats. Today's a little different. Well, not too different. I've had a few, uh, gosh, I'll use the word metaphysical. My guest today might correct me on that. I don't know. But I'll use that word metaphysical guests on before. Not every episode is about art and tattoos. And in the beginning, I didn't think you guys were into that. But man, was I wrong. I've been getting more DMs and compliments and requests on these types of subjects than I do sometimes for the tattooers and artists I have on. So in light of that and me trying to um, give you guys what you're after. I've got a guest today who came recommended by a very good friend of mine, Ian Gardner. Some of you saw that episode and loved that episode. This is a good buddy of his. And before I get to his introduction, I kind of wanted to say a few words on a subject that's been on my mind. And I think today's guest highlights it. You know, this idea of, um, of intuition, you know, I've talked on the show many times about some of my um, out-of-body experiences during um, DMT and some other plant medicines, and even maybe on some of my meditation journeys. And a couple of the things I noticed in these spaces, out-of-body, wherever this world is, that it seemed to be that I was connected to everything. And you hear this a lot in the spiritual community. We are everything. We are everything. I happen to believe that's true. I don't know what exactly it is going on behind the curtain, but I definitely sense something to the effect of I'm like a I'm like a nerve ending in the hand of God or something like the universe is God and I'm just and I am God because I'm still a nerve ending in his body but from that perspective I am the whole thing right or I'm at least connected to the whole thing and I'm looking back at the whole thing through this particular aperture which I call Aaron um, so from that perspective this idea of intuition enters to me in this way of like well I must already know everything, future, past, present. Um, But I don't think our conscious minds are equipped to process that type of information, that much information that quickly. And I think, and this is just my opinion, and our guest today is an actual pro at this stuff, but I think what's going on with intuition and instinct is that it's our body's way, our mind's way of delivering us that message that much information computed so quickly in giving you the information you need in a way called intuition because it can't give it to you in normal thought patterns. So that's just my little monologue, thoughts I've always had about the subject of intuition and gut instinct and things like that. And that's what our guest today is gonna speak towards. But having said all that, I wanna read a small introduction that kind of really sums him up for you guys. So he coined the term the luck bubble. Um, The premise of the luck bubble is Suppose just for a moment there is an ether that exists through which circumstances are created by virtue or whatever has the power in one's subconscious. This problem, the problem is that most people and organizations are not even aware of the very particular thing they subconsciously always focused on. It takes a particular skill to identify this, then another to successfully integrate a pivot that results in what the average eye looks like outrageous to what the average eye looks like outrageous good fortune from thousands of hours of success this is what my next guest is a master of so with all that being said please welcome my guest today kirk westwood thanks mike cheers <laughs> that's a long oh, one shit, that's a mouthful <laughs> holy do who's this kirk westwood like <laughs> sounds interesting <laughs> 
Yeah, man. I mean, I am being honest when I say I'm very excited to have you on. This subject that you have studied, I mean, I think I've read something 20 years or more, is something mm -hmm. I'm like, I use as like a pastime hobby. And I find it super fun to, to read books about it and to spend time thinking about it and spend time in meditation trying to develop these types of skills. Mm -hmm. I think I'm okay. I've definitely had some magic moments where I was like, man... I think I just saw the future and I made the right call and I kind of knew, I knew. Mm -hmm. But I've also had many times where I just flubbed it all up. So I would never consider myself a master. However, you've spent much of your life working on this stuff. So maybe we'll, we're going to get deep into that. But I don't know where you want to start. I thought maybe we could start a little bit on origin story, like how you yeah, end sure. up in this. I mean, it, let's face it, not a lot of people end up doing this type of work. So I would assume there were circumstances mm -hmm. that the universe set up for you that here you are today. I'd like to hear a bit about yeah, that. Yeah, sure, absolutely. I am beyond pumped to be sponsored at the show here by Sullen Clothing, Ryan, Jeremy, amazing human beings, huge supporters of art and especially the tattoo community. If you want a really badass t-shirt with a sick drawing on it by a killer tattoo artist, go to their website, check out sullenclothing.com. If you're an artist and you wanna have some of your art on one of their apparel, um, Send that over to design at sullen.com. And again, thank you, Sullen, for your support. Back to the show. Um, in 2000, I got sick with an illness that they said would kill me. I was sleeping 20 hours a day for almost three years, got down to 110 pounds. And the only way I got better was by doing stuff that I didn't understand, extreme rituals and practices. And one of those things that helped me was the use of intuition. So I studied with a master for over a decade learning how to read people in situations so that I could get better. Mm. And the more and more I learned about myself, the more I realized I didn't know about myself. And then in starting to tune into other people, they started turning to me for healing, if you will, and trying to understand what was going on in their own bodies. And I became very, very good at it. But I didn't want to be a healer. So I ran away from that. I had a couple of friends who stole five tons of gold bullion from a dictator's wife. It's a long story, but they were special forces. And I became enamored with their lifestyle and their skill set. So I ran away from the healing side of things and went and joined the military. And for three years I trained with a, a special forces unit in Australia, a commando unit. And they trained me up for special forces selection. And we have a couple of hundred guys similar to your, your Navy SEALs or your, your Rangers or your, any of your tier one operators, your Green Berets. And Prior to me completing selection, I got stabbed in the eye with a stick that had explosives on it and it ate away the cornea in my left eye. It was just a, what I thought was a piece of straw grass ended up being very detrimental. So whilst my team um, toured Afghanistan and were busy in other places as well, I stayed behind and I started focusing my skill set, trying to understand what creates what looks like luck. Mm. How was it that I had this bad luck happen to me? And I'd seen good luck with my clients so I coined the phrase, the luck bubble, and that was how guys in combat could get shot through the webbing of their clothing and not get hit. They could drive over IEDs and it not go off. And this happened with such alarming regularity in combat that the phrase became rather well known. Hmm. So after that and, and defining it as such and coming up with a training module for people to get through selection, because guys don't need to go through their stuff when they're going through selection. They just need to have a set of rules that they follow that gets them through. And it's very simple. Hmm. One, get the job done. There's no room for excessive emotion or thinking in combat. Two is look after your mates. You don't have to like your teammates, but loving them will make a hell of a difference and it'll keep you alive. Mm -hmm. And that's why we succeed in combat is because we do it for each other. Nothing's mm -hmm. going to happen to you whilst I'm facing that way, you're facing that way, and nothing's going to happen to you no matter what. And the third thing is it's just a game. It's just a game. Life is just a game. And you might be cold and wet. You haven't slept in forever. And you're getting challenged physically, mentally, and emotionally. All this pressure on you. But those who have the ability to realize it's just a game and they're playing to win, they sculpt the future into a better outcome. Because whilst everybody else is freaking out, expecting the worst, they're just expecting the best. Instead of trying to solve a problem that hasn't happened yet or resolve your shit from the past, you're in the now. And that's where the magic is. Mm. So then I started traveling, traveling the world, documenting rituals and practices, cultural rituals and practices that created what looked like luck. And then a producer heard of me and they brought me to the States to try and turn that into a TV series. And that got very messy and the energy wasn't right. And I pulled out of that. And that's when companies and teams started turning to me and saying, well, can you create luck for us? 
And it's not luck, it's simply cause and effect. Mm -hmm. But intuition is right at the core of that. Mm -hmm. Being able to read someone and say, well, you'd rather be right than happy about the way you see the world and you see yourself in it. Mm -hmm. And my skill set is I simply use symbolism to give me a launching point for my imagination to answer the very specific question that we're asking. So I can teach you intuition today. We could have fun. We could we could read Eric if you want to. We could project into the future. We could. I'm, I'm in, man. However you want to do this, we could do some live, right on the we spot type stuff. stuff. I do want to add, though, it's sure. funny as you were talking because I did have um, an out-of-body experience once and, I, it's, and these entities were there. And one of the, the, the overarching me message was, it's just a game. <laughs> and it was sort of like, you're taking it too seriously. Mm -hmm. You should be having more fun. Mm -hmm. and uh, you're coming back here anyway. Like, you're only there for just a little bit, and you're yeah. acting like all this silly things matter, and you're wasting time. Laugh, play, have fun. It's a game. And, that, and you said that. I, it just clicked. I went right, right back to that moment. And I'm sure then in that moment, if you can remember back to it, it was the truth. It wasn't an opinion. It, wasn't, it was yeah. just a visceral, cellular, this is the truth as a lot of people have with that DMT experience you talked about. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know what? There's just no denying the truth. I've had a lot of, done a lot of rituals around the world and those moments in time where you, you cut to a truth, it's just obvious. And that's my job is not telling boards or corporations or CEOs or sports teams what I know. It's we sit in it and we say, what do you get? And just everybody in the room just goes, that's the truth. That's undeniable. It's obvious. Mm -hmm. It's not someone's agenda trying to get something. It's just what the, the truth of what the current reality is mm -hmm. and what the ultimate vision is and then what the action is to take between the two. I don't want to keep cutting you off, but as you speak, I just keep having thoughts. But I, do, I have often thought to myself, like the biggest thing that's held me back in my life is my the times I wasn't able to tell be with my own truth mm. you know looking in that mirror and and you know little things like oh telling myself a story that makes what i did yesterday okay or what i'm about to do tomorrow okay negotiating mm -hmm. and deep behind that i've gotten better and if, of course i'm not perfect but i realized dude you just got to be okay with what is you you kind of do know that that's bullshit and you're gonna look in a mirror and continue to say it to yourself right. you know truth right the truth will set you free as they say you know all the cultures in the world that have studied and they all agree on what this meaning of life is of this life they can't agree with what happens in the afterlife mm -hmm. there's some similar things but they don't agree but they all in all great works they have a statement which is to know thyself mm -hmm. i mean it's in the new testament the old testament right. it's in the I Ching. it's it's in polynesian folklore it's in aboriginal folklore it's in the kabbalah i mean it's know thyself yeah when you know what it is you're dedicated to proving about yourself and then you come to be with what you're trying to get away from, that will set you free. Yeah. That's where the magic is. And that is the meaning of life as taught by the wisest of the wise for eons, mm -hmm. for eons. Yeah. Know thyself. And then once you know it, come to be with what is. Mm -hmm. That's the great litmus test for you to create. Oh, I'd like to be with what is, but I just need to manipulate things. There's no faith. Mm -hmm. There's no faith, there's no belief in it actually going to work out. So therefore, what happens? It doesn't work out. Whether you believe it will or won't, you're right. Mm -hmm. And such is the human endeavor. We all have our stuff. And no yeah. one can judge anybody else's stuff. Because we're dedicated to being right. We're dedicated to saying, this is the way the world is on the masculine and feminine. And this is the way I am in it. From a very young age, I mean, I've done reads on, on people and gone back into their parent, the pregnancy like mm -hmm. their incubation period saying actually your parents wanted to abort you and they're going what are you talking about so go and ask your mother i'll guarantee you there was a point in time where they actually wanted and energetically you took on that there must be something wrong with me mm -hmm. at that earliest event and then you dedicated your life to proving a thousand times little events that prove that that's the way the world is yeah. the problem isn't that we've got six billion bits of information at one time the problem isn't that we can only focus on a thousand bits at any one time. The problem isn't that we can only really cognitively look for three bits of information at a time. The problem is we look for the same three bits of information that back every up our story. time. Yeah. And if it's not there, we misbehave to create that situation. Yeah. yeah. It's the person who's not enough. I mean, Hollywood is full of it. My time in Los Angeles recently, and the people come because they're not enough, so they'll be an actor where they can be more 
and they bring it in, but they walk out of the conversation and the person's like, the person's just like, it's kind of full of shit. Mm-hmm. And I can relate to that because it's part of my personality at a younger age before I knew myself. It's like, hey, look at me, come mm-hmm. into a room. And it took a lot of pain and change and thousands and thousands of hours worth of, of work leading me down a path that taught me actually, I just don't think I'm enough. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Decide to be enough. Mm-hmm. And once I did that, emotions came up for me. Why? Because I've been resisting it for so long. You know, this coffee cup doesn't weigh much, but ask me again tomorrow how much it weighs. Mm. My whole world will be concerned about getting away from the pain in my shoulder because that weighs so much. And so it is with emotions over years and years and years. Mm. Our fear of the fear is worse than what we fear. Man, I'm loving this. And you're, you know, it's funny, um, obviously I own a few different businesses and I hire people and sometimes have to fire people, unfortunately, but not very often. But during my, and I used to pick this up again. I, I was really, um, doing this for a while. One of my main leading questions for an interview was to say, do you think most people in the world are bad or good? And I always liked that question because to me, it was a setup to the people that say, I think most people are good. To me, that was like, they're already in the luck bubble because they're already starting each day with the assumption that, you know, I realize there's nefarious characters out there. I'm not an idiot, uh, you know, mm-hmm. but most people are good. And, and also in my own life experience, you know, I'm, I have some folks in my life that they're just convinced, I think it's from Fox News or whatever they watch every day, that the world is so mm-hmm. bad. And I often say, I'm like, let me ask you this. In your personal experience, when was the last time you met a really, really horrible, evil person? And they really got to think about it because the reality is they went to the grocery store that day. Everything was fine. They met somebody here. The mailman came by this, the neighbor. And, 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 that, and it sets this whole paradigm up of, do you, are you going into the world every day thinking it's, it's full of bad people that want to hurt you? Or are you going into the world today feeling like, no, most of those people out there are loving and cooperative and there's tons of opportunity. And I don't know if that's a little off subject from where you were going there. But, mm-hmm. No, but, it just, it raises a very interesting question. And I must be very careful with my words here. In my, the last month having been back in the States for the first time in a few years, the, certainly the, the climate, the emotional climate of Southern California has changed dramatically. Mm. Where the underlying current, and this is gonna be controversial, but I'm gonna say, does it serve the highest good? The lights are on, yeah, it serves the highest good. So the underlying premise is that most people are scared. Mm-hmm. And how that plays out is they're angry. Mm-hmm. So when you ask me if people are good or bad, it's, it's not as simple as that polarity. But I'll say it has changed in the last couple of years to people being scared and how that plays out in the world is they're angry mm-hmm. and they're attributing malice to events that could simply be written off as ignorance. You go on the highway, I must have seen it five times yesterday, where people are aggressive towards other people because they think it means something about them and the person just cuts them off. Mm-hmm. In Australia, it's interesting because we're just a bunch of convicts and we complain <laughs> about a lot of shit, but we're happy being the happy drunk uncle of the world because we have this, ah, she'll be right. You yeah. Know, we're fucked, so she'll be right. Don't worry about it. Yeah. And that's why our soldiers are so good as well. But if you, someone cuts you off in traffic in Australia, you're like, son of a bitch. But if he goes, sorry, mate, you're right. Ah, he's all right. Because he has an awareness of me. It wasn't personal. He has an awareness. Whereas I find in California in the last month, everyone takes it personal. Mm -hmm. I was in a Gelson's and I was, I asked the young, I saw a water bottle sitting on the the checkout. And uh, I said, excuse me. I said, I think she just left her uh, water bottle. She said, no, that's mine. And the other one is my co-workers and we're leaving it there. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa." (laughs) And I think what you meant to say was, thank you very much for caring to maybe run this person down and bring it back to them. Um, no, that's actually mine. And she looked at me with such disgust. She wanted to, she was very angry at me. Yeah. That was just she, she started that day with the mantra that everyone's shitty and you, you filled that for her, even though that wasn't what you were doing. Exactly. She assigned it to you and she will have that story later. Yeah. Right. This guy came in, this Australian oh, guy tried to attitude. steal my water bottle right the in front attitude. of me. And how dare he? Like what the, <laughs> Um, and that is my job. My job is to show people their misbehavior. Mm. We all have misbehaviors that create our reality. 
and across i even see like in australia we because we're convicts and we go she'll be right because we were on this island and we're like we're completely fucked here we're, we've got no way of getting off this island there's shit everywhere that can kill us um oh well we'll just make it up as opposed to the pilgrims who came across and settled the u.s why did they come to escape the decadence of the renaissance period mm -hmm. they were scared they wanted to create their own utopia and if you see the Amish, the closest reputation you have a modern day representation of the pilgrims, they're very scared of anything outside of what they can control. Mm -hmm. It's just fear. So fear drives their misbehavior. Mm -hmm. That's my job is to say to people, this is how you're creating a reality. Mm -hmm. And it's always us. It's always us. So people, you're right, enter this day, whether it being good or bad, Things are a little bit more grayer than that in that people are dedicated to proving the way it is in their own thing. I only see about a dozen different beliefs in people, mm. but they're dedicated to proving that's the way it is. And under pressure, it comes out. So the beauty of selection period for special forces is we're just putting you under pressure. Out of a few hundred people, in the last phase was 130 odd guys for us, just night and day, we're blaming you for stuff. We are physically smashing you, mentally, emotionally, putting you under pressure to see what your default is. Mm -hmm. and thus the luck bubble was born was guys if you just keep it as a game and just know that you're going to get blamed for stuff that's not your fault and if the absolute worst of it you've been served up a sheep's head after three days of no food if you get stuck in and take the eyeball and, and, and have a laugh about it because that's the only nutrients you're going to get that's what we're looking for mm -hmm. the guys who go I'm shot I've got a hole in me ah, it doesn't matter she'll be right yeah to get on with it it's just a game mm -hmm. let's get the job done yeah, you know, you, I was listening to you because I've been thinking a lot about America specifically and the unique. I just got back from Europe, spent a little time over there, and immediately off the plane, I noticed right away. I just feel these are just my interpretations, but I just feel like over there people are more laid back, and I don't know. There's a lot of things happening. The big one I'm, I think it's, I think a lot of Americans feel like we're on. It's like when you're on top, you're the most scared guy, kind of, because you've got the most to lose. Your, your example of Australians, it's kind of like what you're saying is, hey, we're already fucked, so no use even worrying about getting fucked. Where I think Americans are like, even from a national security standpoint, it's like, okay, we've got the biggest military in the world. That should make you feel comfortable. No, we've got to make it bigger because who knows who's right behind us, who wants to kill us, who wants to get us, who wants all our money, who wants all our stuff. You know, I do see that percolating in a very to everyone in some subtle way and you go to these other places like especially europe the french and the spanish and they're like yeah i'm gonna take a month off and travel and it just what about your retirement what i don't know i'm, I'm 28 years old i'm gonna right. go go travel it just seems different and I, you were Absolutely. just I, I had to revisit that because i do live here and i do notice that right. um, nothing different can come of what you believe your misbehavior creates the very thing you're trying to get away from. Mm -hmm. So whether you think it is or not, you're going to create that. And to look at the US, let's say the last 50 years, 70 years of military spending. Okay, we want to protect our people. Well, no, actually, no, you're scared. And therefore you believe that you need to hang on tight and be the world's police and protect your own. Well, the only one thing that can come of that is you're going to chaos theory. The exact opposite is going to happen. Looking after your people would have been spending half of what you spend on spending on a Medicare system. Mm. Well, you attract what you're looking for, right? If you're saying every day someone's going to beat me up, I think someone's going to beat me up. I think somebody, someone's going to beat you up eventually. You know, right. yeah, that is true. Um, and it, you know, and that from that regard, it worries me because I live here and I right. see that energy frequency being pushed out by our citizens and our governments and just sort of an underlying tone coming out of this this country and. Maybe we're we're moving in a better direction. I like to be optimistic, but that but I do agree with you. I, I notice it. Yeah, and it's um, people ask me, well, what's the solution then? I said, well, when I tune into it, the solution is not on uh, a macro level. It's not we've got to fight the man. We've got to you know don't go to a um, what was it the saying about Mother Teresa? COVID two weeks ago, my brain just is is blanking at the moment about the saying she had she wouldn't go to a um, anti-war rally, she'd go to a peace rally mm. because putting the power in what you want and it starts with the self. Mm -hmm. If you've got people going after something and, and when people get angry, that's the, the, the litmus test. If you're angry about it, it's because you subconsciously feel powerless to change that. Mm. That's my observation. Anger is always fear, right? 
underneath it all. It's this powerlessness to change something that you don't like. Mm -hmm. But that means you've already got the power in it being the way that you don't like it. Mm -hmm. But when you come to understand that you're scared, you're angry, and there's only well, they say four or five base emotions. Are you sad about it? Are you angry about it? Are you fearful of it? Are you shamed? Or, or are you in joy? And when you break it down to, that, down to those emotions, how do I feel about that? Breathe into that. Take a breath, because it's just emotion. It can't hurt you. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, I'm, I'm angry. I'm really angry. I'm frustrated. It's on the spectrum of angry. Okay, is it okay if we breathe into that? Because it's just an emotion. Mm-hmm. Okay. Breathe into that. Where's that in the body? What's around my throat? I just want to... What's underneath that? Just be with that, like we mm-hmm. talked about before. Being with that gives another layer and another layer and another layer. And underneath it, you find that you think this event means something about you. Mm-hmm. And that is where the gold lies in you being okay with the way you feel, the discoveries that come. Now, I won't work with the client for a personal client for under six months but then I don't want to work with them any longer than six months. I want to bring them to the dark night of their soul where they see that everything that fucked up in their life was their fault and show them exactly how all the moments were exactly the same and they look different on the outside, but they're exactly the same to try and prove the way they see the world. And that hurts. And the only way through it is through it, is to be with that, to be with what is. Mm. And when they truly come to be with that, you literally see the energy leave their body it might be the gun in the mouth moment for PTSD suffering soldiers that I work with. And they go, oh my God. And they come to be with that pain instead of avoiding the pain. And they go through. And then on the other, you literally see them shift. Mm. And that's why I'm excited about MDMA and ketamine and psilocybin being passed through the Senate now to mm-hmm. the lower house. Because that is a, is a starting point for most to, to step outside of what they know. Mm-hmm. But it has to be psychic psychedelic assisted therapy Mm -hmm. it has to be a psychiatrist who prescribes medication and you go through a a, a vetting process to see Mm -hmm. that you can handle that and then it's the psychologist who leads you through the regressional therapy for you to uncover what it is you don't know about yourself Mm -hmm. it's my work and then from there you have that breakthrough moment like you talked about in dmt experiences Every great culture has a DMT experience or a mm-hmm. breathwork experience where it releases DMT within one's own body mm-hmm. where you come to see the world through a filter that you didn't even know existed. It is a paradigm shift that is a different way of looking at the world that you cannot get to unless you've done work, say, with me or going through the psychedelic experience. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited about that for humanity because people will go, it's not you, it's not them, it's not the left, it's not the right, it's not Democrat, Republican. It's not vaxxer, anti-vaxxer. It's you. Hmm. It's you. And until you come to be with how you feel, nothing's going to change for you. Therefore, nothing's going to change for your family. Nothing's going to change for your community. Nothing's going to change for the world. So if you really want to change the world, stop giving to charity. Stop spending your time rallying and fighting the man. Do the work on yourself. Go down the path. Because that's the way the humanity evolves do that things change yeah i think it was uh, maybe it was john lennon be the change that you want to see in the world these things are they're not new ideas i mean they've been said like you said earlier the wisest of us have, have said these things and you know you were speaking earlier about being with emotions you know and uh I've I've had cycles in my life where, you know, like 10 years ago, I was in a deep cycle of uh, hallucinogenics and meditation and, I don't know, business just sort of kicked up again. And I sort of wasn't, haven't been meditating as much the last eight years or so and still tapping in, still reading, still doing some work, still experimenting with some hallucinogenics, microdosing things. And then uh, this last year, I kicked off this show, I expanded one of my businesses, and uh, I just had a lot of hurdles. And I got really kicked, I got pretty beat up this year for the first time in a while. Mm. Like, um, I guess you could even say I felt like I was losing or not winning anymore. And and we talked earlier about, I am I now, I know, like, you can't decide if something's good or bad in the moment. In time, it's all good. I'm 52. Mm-hmm. I've yet to have the bad thing happen when I reflect it back later. But... Um, you know, just just the other day, my my wife was questioning me and my actions inside my business, and I caught myself basically hmm. snapping. You know, just like da, 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 da. 
you know, and then she was on a phone call. She hung up and then I sat with that and I did exactly what you said. I asked myself that same, I was like, Aaron, why did you do that? And I'm like, because you are scared she's going to reveal um, maybe something you didn't do correct. Mm. Um, well, why is that a problem? Uh, because if she finds out I did something incorrect, then I'm not, I'm not a winner. I, I'm a loser. I, I'm not. I'm worthless. I mean, all that started coming yeah, through, right. you know. And I was a little mini mom. I wasn't a big fight or anything, but I just uh-huh. I Good caught it. I was like. What the fuck is, why would you speak to your, the love of your life that way? She's asking you a question and you're snapping at her. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I quickly made it to that place. I'm not awesome. saying I get there every time. Awesome. I have probably some buttons that would, I, but it, the other part I realized during that, I said that too, I'm like, okay, how do you feel right now? I dropped the conversation. I just went physical. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I feel like I have anxiety. Well, what's anxiety? That's what I said. And I'm like, I don't know. I just, I can't sit still. I just, I'm, I'm kind of gripping. I feel this kind of hollowness inside my chest. Mm-hmm. I. Okay, and then I said, okay, so is it going to kill you? No. I, you know, okay, so you're not going to die, so we can let that over there. You're going to mm-hmm. live. Um, and really think of all the problems and physical sensations that could be happening to you right now. Put this on a scale of 1 to 10. You know, I've had serious injuries that I would call a 9 in pain. Uh, 30 minutes later, I'm in the backyard trimming some trees, I went swimming with my kid. I, it was over. And I think I processed a little smidgen of my own fear and my own fear of, of self-doubt and, self, and self-worth self became stronger. So I, I don't know if that illustrates some yeah, of no, the... Yeah, no, totally. We think it means something about us. We have emotions because we think it means something about us. Mm. It's as simple as that. So rather than run away from the emotion or trying to express the emotion, just be with what is. Mm. Know yourself. Learn to understand actually underneath it all, this is what I'm thinking about itself. So you did a great job in diffusing. And then you realize, whoa, 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 whoa. If the situation didn't call for what took place. It was just subconsciously, the radar is up looking for those moments that goes boom mm-hmm. and it latches onto that because mm-hmm. it doesn't want to, and the avoidance of that feeling is the very thing that keeps it coming back. Mm-hmm. So good and intensifies it probably. And so. intensifies it. People say, go hit the bag, you know, get it. No, that means next week you're going to have to come back and hit the bag as well. Mm-hmm. Instead of trying to vocalize it, do something bad, just be with it, mm-hmm. just feel it in your body become feeling machines rather than thinking machines. Mm -hmm. I see this a lot with clients, that the really, really smart ones can be the most messed up because Mm -hmm. they become these these thinking machines Mm -hmm. as opposed to the ones who are almost on the spectrum where they just don't feel it. Mm -hmm. Like they literally just, the emotions are on their sleeve and they feel, therefore they create a lot easier. Mm -hmm. They don't get in the way. They're more present more often. People say, but he's not a very smart guy or gal, but everything works out for them. It's a blessing in disguise Mm -hmm. because they truly just have the ability to be with it as opposed to pulling it apart and thinking it means something about them. Yeah. Without a doubt. I can be that way. I can think of a friend of mine that, man, you nailed him. Guy's got like this super high IQ and I'm not going to name his name because we don't talk anymore. It's sad. Um, His issue, I think, is became alcoholism. But the guy, he went to MIT, just a brainiac, but had tons of trauma uh, Mm -hmm. from his father. And I know a lot about that. And and yeah, he would just think he he was constantly telling a story. He was so crafty with his intelligence that he never Mm -hmm. healed. He went Mm -hmm. to psychologist after psychologist after psychologist. Mm -hmm. And he would unwind what they said and tell you where they were wrong and right. And and I remember one day, not uh, fully understanding, but feeling what you just said, just looking at him thinking, you're just too smart for your own good, dude. Mm-hmm. Get in his own way. <laughs> yeah. Get in his own way. He was going to be right. And you know, his, his right was, I got, I got screwed. My dad screwed me over. My family screwed me over. Mm-hmm. And that's why I'm this way. And he wasn't going to let anybody take that away. And therefore, that's what he creates. There's more and more of the same. Yeah. It's, it's not rocket science. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. cause and effect. It's simply cause and effect. You know, that level of conscious unconscious competence you know ideally there's those people who just cruise through life and they're not even how they're not sure how they create it but they create what looks like good fortune shit just works out for them but then at the other end of the scale there's those who aren't even aware the unconscious of their incompetence Mm -hmm. and that's my job to go you don't even know you're an idiot let's get you to the level of you realize you're an idiot and then we'll go to the next level which is you're not an idiot anymore but you've got to work at it Mm-hmm. And then we'll get you back to being unconsciously competent. Mm-hmm. When I'm working with um, operators, you know, special forces operators, they're, you know, my job isn't to go into the weeds of what is going on for them. 
they just need to be able as quickly as possible switch back to being unconsciously competent get the job done look after your mates have a good time that's mm -hmm. the ethos and they stay in that not to say that when the combat time is done that they don't need work in other areas of their life mm -hmm. but when it comes to the burden of um, the burden that the test the pressure test of selection or combat that's the thing that gets them through mm -hmm. and they all share that trait it's just what I observed across all tier one operators across the globe it's mm -hmm. just what I observed and don't get me wrong look, I didn't complete selection I wasn't a green beret I was with a unit for a period of time and people say that well you weren't an operator so you can't quite no no I was perfectly placed to observe it with my mm -hmm. skill set I'm an intuit who had the balls enough to observe it at the coal face as close as I could get. Mm -hmm. I'm not an operator that is espousing the way things are done. Not at all. I'm an intuit. And I need to clarify that too. Mm -hmm. And it always happens, you know, where the people, however they react to my work, that's their stuff. My job is to be provocative. My job is to push their buttons <laughs> you know, because it shows them what they do. And I get material all the time, 24-7. I literally have to turn it off. And turn it on when I want. And how I turn it on is I say, I choose to serve the highest good. Yeah. And if I choose to serve the highest good, does it serve the highest good to give this person this information? And often it makes me look like an idiot. I remember being in a cafe years ago and um, I walked in, I got this massive hit on the person behind the counter. I'm like, I can't say anything. They're going to make me sound like an idiot. Does it serve the highest good? It does. You absolutely must tell this person. I'm like, shit. I said, mate, wherever you're going tomorrow, don't go. You're going to get really, really, really sick. Just push it back and you'll see. And he's like, who the fuck are you? And everyone's like, who the fuck is this guy? Fuck off. He didn't even want to serve me. I'm like, okay. So I walked out of there. And three months later, I went back into that cafe. And this guy, this guy in there, he's this whisper thin guy. And he's got all these scars on his face. And I didn't recognize. He said, you're the guy. Guys, this is the guy. Remember the guy that told me not to go? I'm like, oh, sorry, mate. And he reminded me. He said, you told me not to go. I went to Mexico. And I was in, I got sick the next day. And within 48 hours, I was in a coma for 12 weeks. And uh, they, these marks are where they had me on the spit roast, you know, the coma, when they put you in the coma bed that turns you for oh, bed right, sores. Right, right. And this is what happened here. How do you know what you know? I said, well, there's always information available. It's just people aren't, haven't trained this. We all have the skill right. of intuition. Right. It's just a skill that we have supplanted by being busy with other things mm -hmm. and other focuses. But anybody can learn intuition in a heartbeat. Hmm. I, I, I would agree. I mean, I believe we're all born the same in certain regards, especially as natural, ta what humans are, or what humans are. We're born. Your journey, what you focus on, what you work out. What, you know, I'm a creative, I'm an artist. You know, people often say, where did you come up with that idea? I'm like, you can do that. Oh, no, I'm not an artist. I'm like, yeah, you are. I just, it's a muscle. Like if I'd been doing, you know, push-ups my whole life, I'd have giant uh -huh. arms. But I right. didn't do push-ups my whole life. I sat in rooms quietly drawing things. And uh -huh. it really isn't magic. It's just what I put my time towards and mastered. Right. And a guy like you, the, you know, you've, you've put your time towards developing that inner voice or what you call that intuition. Right. And that's, that's incredible. And but that wasn't by choice, you know, other than getting, because I was sick. Like it forced my hand. I never wanted to be a healer. I still don't want to be a healer. Mm. But it was three years ago when I finally just gave up on wanting to know what my bigger purpose was in life. And I said, okay, this is, this is what I am. Yeah. And there's, when I stopped resisting it, that's when things started to flow more and more. I got even greater at what I do and, and insight at a far deeper level. And I just choose to serve and it just works out, even when I don't think it's going to work out. I remember doing a, um, a speech for a, um, a retreat center, the opening speech, and they loved it. And I worked with their clients in the first week and all the, the 50 odd clients were there. They dropped, you know, 10, 12 grand, whatever it was to come there. They liked that opening speech by Kirk, set us up and just were energetic beings having a human experience and like vibration tracks, like vibration. And then to actually see it firsthand, it was awesome. And then the next week, because I always step into a keynote asking, does it serve the highest good? And is there any information I need to know? And this information came through talking about death and the military and it was dark. And I did it for this first week. And six people left the retreat because of my speech. And they wanted their money back. They're like, what the fuck? If that's the way this week's going to be, we're out of here. Mm -hmm. What's this Kirk dude talking about this shit? And all the way through it, I'm like, I can't be talking about this stuff. And intuition is like, you're talking about this because it serves the highest good. And you don't know how, so just be with it. I've got dozens of these stories of serving the highest good where I don't think it serves. Anyway, end of the week, they called up and said, look, Kirk, everyone's complained about that speech. You, you can't. You can't do that. Can you come back and do 
the speech you did in the first week. I said, well, I can't because I choose to serve the highest good. I've got to be with what is. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it has ramifications. They said, well, we can't have you anymore. And I was so bummed. It was my biggest gig. And I was like, shit, what the fuck, intuition? Motherfucker. Anyway, end of the week, I get a phone call from a dude who attended. And he said, I came there to put a bullet through the back of my head that first day getting there because my parents paid for it and uh, my father was in the military and everything that you said was speaking directly to me and you saved my life because I was going to literally check in as a big fuck you to my dad and then I was going to go to my room and do it and you they wouldn't let me they said you've got to go and listen to Kirk talk and you circumvented me from doing that so we make assumptions about serves the highest good. Mm -hmm. When I heard that, and they're like, yes, so we'd love to have you back. And it's like, okay, sure, if it chooses to serve the highest good. Actually, it doesn't serve the highest good for me to be there anymore. My work there is done. And I'm like, what the fuck, intuition? And that's happened so many times. I'll give you many, many more stories about how we just make assumptions. Only the fool sees a detour as anything less than potentially saving their life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I get stabbed in the eye before going to Afghanistan. The reality of it was... There's probably shit that would have gone down that would have changed me as a person. It's interesting. The night before that happened, I had a, a, a soldier that we respected came up to me and said, Westy, I've been thinking about this. Do you think, as you say, it serves the highest good? Do you think it serves the highest good for you to pass selection? Because in four months, you're going to be in Afghanistan and there's a 12-year-old boy who's going to point an AK at me. I need you to put two bullets in his head without thinking about it. And I think your skills are better served elsewhere. And I'm like, yeah, but I've put two years of my life in this. I've busted my ass. I've committed to this. He's like, I understand, but does it serve the highest good? I said, hmm, good point. Okay, I choose to serve the highest good. What will be, will be. Mm -hmm. The next day, I get stabbed in the eye with a stick that has cordite on it that eats away the corner in my left eye. Mm -hmm. The most random of injuries that blinded me for a year mm -hmm. in that eye, it's a real struggle. Mm -hmm. And then I go to a to a, a healer in Southeast Asia to document him and, and they work on my eye, my eyes on fire for five days and I come back and I've regrown the corneal tissue, documented from 50 micron to 600 micron. Unheard of, it's like regrowing a finger. Mm. Shit that I can't explain. Mm. And now I look back, what, 15 years on ago, it served the highest good. But at the time, we're so built up in trying to put energy into a concept of what we want as opposed to being with what is. Mm-hmm. I love that. I mean, I told you this before we started our, our um, podcast today, we kind of got on a little personal conversation and you had told me, you know, this is your North Star, I call it, you know, the choose the highest, what serves the highest good is your North Star. And uh, it really resonated with me because I've been working off of um, do no harm, which is a mm -hmm. Buddhist uh, mantra. And I think that's a great one, but I like that I'm changing, I'm upgrading, I'm upgrading because the, uh, <laughs> the, the upgrade. do no harm is... It's too, I don't know, I, I, this is just me spitballing, but it seems too simple because then it's just, oh, don't hurt anyone, be nice. It's kind of like be nice, don't, it almost can turn into don't hurt any, anyone's feelings mm -hmm. or don't upset anyone. Mm -hmm. And the reality is sometimes the best thing you could do in that moment, it might piss some people right. off. I'll give you a great example of that. Recently I took a 10 days to walk the back country of Yellowstone last month mm. with a great buddy and his son and his son's good mate. And Part of that process was doing a bit of a coming of age process for these 13 year old boys because they had the chance to become men. It's something we lack in our culture. It's a chance to die a death to the infantile way of thinking. Mm -hmm. And all great cultures with no contact, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. And they're better for it. So during this period of time, and I got um, somewhat approval from the local indigenous peoples of that particular area, which was a fantastic story in itself of how I came into contact with them. But it always serves the highest good. I choose that, we go after it, got my intention, and everything fell into place. And close, we were so remote. I mean, we're on the Great Divide. No one had walked this trail for a long time. And I mean, the day we saw a grizzly not too far away, and those things are huge, by the way. <laughs> I've seen him. Uh, they scared the shit out of me. <laughs> Holy shit. He just stood up a little bit and he was eight foot high and he wasn't even standing to full height. Amazing and he could be stuff. right up in your face in under eight seconds if he wanted to. And be. he took off in the other direction. It's beautiful <laughs> golden color. But I, I digress. Yeah. And the concept was using um, the indigenous peoples of that particular area was that they have time without water or food and they are in a designated area around a tree and that is there and they're there. Normally, it would be a vision quest of sorts. They would stay there until the vision happens. No food, no water. And some of these vision quests last up to 12 days of no water mm. in the elements. 
but incredible things take place. I wasn't pushing the boys to that because they're not, they haven't, haven't been trained enough to be ready for that, mm. but I wanted to give them a taste of it. So we gave them uh, overnight. It's a case of, okay, boys, you're now going out on your own, on your solo. No equipment, you can't get inside your tents until, um, and you've got your bear spray with you, but not getting inside your tents until sundown. You're just gonna be with what is for the next hours until sundown, and then you're out by yourself, and tomorrow morning I'll come and get you. And after an hour, one of them came down. He was, he was hurting. Mm. And he said, I can't do this, man. I'm, I'm, I'm not indigenous. I don't want to, why do I have to do this? And, and he was hurting and it broke my heart because he was hurting so much. And I said, I choose to serve the highest good. Just give me a moment. And I was like, you must give him the opportunity to stay because mm. he'll never forget it. And the saying is to him, you won't, I won't think you're a pussy, but you'll think you're a pussy. Mm. and that's the difference mm -hmm. you've got to be with this mate just be with what is I promise you I'm here I'm within earshot and I can actually see you and I'm not going to love chosen for nothing but you need to be in that moment of vulnerability you can do this no food no water it's not that bad it's your first instance of it but you can do this and he was distraught he was distraught and it oh, so I'm just thinking of it right now I just feel his pain the poor bugger mm. I said I'll tell you what stay until the sun goes fully down I'll come back to you and if you still want to leave I'll come up with a hot chocolate and I'll take you and I will feed you but at least give yourself that that you've turned around and gone I'll give this a crack and he turned around and he went and did it begrudgingly because I said because you're not coming back because it serves the highest good everything in my body was to do no harm is don't hurt this kid he's mm. not even your kid Kirk <laughs> what makes you think you have permission to do this how dare you this lawsuit material how, what if something happens to him Kirk where's your duty of care serves the highest good no this will serve him so I go up there at sundown I said bud I'm real proud of you for coming for coming back up here he said I want to stay I said what he said I can do this I said yes you can I walked away so proud came back mm -hmm. the next morning could not shut those two up for the first three hours yeah but yet like they had hair on their nuts for the first time in their <laughs> life that they they conquered this you know what i can do this my concept is not the truth of the way it is mm. as we say in special force you get when you think you can't do any more you got 30 percent more in the tank mm -hmm. just take a moment shut up what you need is either 10 seconds or 10 feet away from you mm -hmm. if you just shut the fuck up and be with what is Hmm. That's a great example, the latest example I have of what serves the highest good. It's also an example of what I was talking about, which is do no harm. And that's why I, I, I'm really attaching to this. Because in that mo instance, to do no harm, I would have been like, oh, I don't want to hurt anybody or anything. Come on back. Come on back to camp. And, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, really listening to your heart and knowing, no, this is what needs to happen. That kid is a different kid. Yeah. He, he smashed though. out 17 miles the next day. Wow. And and then the following day after that smashed out another seven I mean he just absolutely crushed it with a smile on his face going yeah. how good is it being out here yeah. no devices nothing I mean he threw a line in three times pulled out a trout the biggest trout I've ever seen in your life wow. the other one the next night says I need to do it first cast pulls in a trout you, you drug him into the luck bubble it's exactly the way it is by conquering, but it's just the good fortune happens from the way that you are not from what you do mm. It's a byproduct of the way that you are. And the way that you are is it takes faith going, you know what? I get my hunch, I back myself. Mm. And in backing yourself, it works out. Do you believe it's going to work out or not? You are right. You are right. Yeah. Beautiful story, dude. Love it. A good example of what you're talking about, too. Yeah, gosh, man. I don't know where you want to take this next. I have questions, but if you, if you want to take me in a direction, holler out. But I just... I don't know. Do you do you have a specific way you teach this? Is is this? Um, well, I don't. I defer everybody who wants to learn intuition to my master of intuition, William White Cloud. Okay. Anybody look him up, William White Cloud, um, uh, natural success. Um, look him up, Google him. He does a great introduction over days of people, and he I think it's even almost for free or very cheap. And that's great. He's a he's the world's greatest teacher of intuition that I know. And I'll defer to him. Mm -hmm. That said, my skill set is different. The luck bubble is different. I'm very specific about going into teams or environments or even a keynote where I give people an experience of spirit. Mm -hmm. Where they come out of that going, I don't know what just happened, but life can never be the same ever again. Mm. That's my job. But in working with people one-on-one -on -one or within a corporation or team, 
I teach them intuition if it's appropriate. Mm -hmm. And how I teach it is very, very simple. And it's the way that I was taught, which is very specifically, you need to ask a very specific question. What's the question? If you don't know what the question is, you ask, what is the specific question? And then I simply define a space as having the answer. See, something is something because we define it as such. A church is a church because we've defined it millions of times as holy ground. Therefore, it's holy ground. So if I draw a circle on the table or on the floor or look at tea leaves or read someone's head with phrenology or tarot cards, the best ones, they're not actually looking at the cards. They're just using that as their imagination leap off point for their intuition. Mm. They're looking into the crystal ball. What do you get? And they just get something comes to you. And as it comes through, you go, okay, well, what's obvious about that symbol in regards to the question? It could be something you hear, something you remember, something that happens right now. And as you do, you just make it up. That's the dirty secret about intuition. <laughs> we all have it. It's just that I have thousands of hours worth of experience over 20 years in backing myself. That even when I don't know what it is, I just go, yabba yeah, it sounds like horse shit. Yabba yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, boom. And that's when I've tapped in. And that's when I go, this is what it is. And the greatest gift I can give someone is to show them what they do habitually. Mm -hmm. So a great example would be if you're up for it, does it, you know, let me just tune in, does it serve the highest, I'll show you, does it serve the highest good for us to actually do a read right now? And I just allow, and just in this viewscape, a symbol to come. So... There's so much symbol, uh, literally symbolism here. There's a trophy that's up there, which is an award. It's like, yeah, well done. There's um, a guru tattoo, but the word, I didn't know it said tattoo. I saw guru. But then there's what looks like serpentine hammerhead, winged creature, like this mythical creature over the top of it. And it's mythical. That was drawn for me by Crayola Simpkins. Crayola, thank you. Really, um, really renowned artist. Eric, you might want to get a shot of that eventually so the people behind can see it because it's a truly beautiful piece of art and truly creative. So in that, what's obvious about those symbols is that um, I'm not the guru. Mm -hmm. I am not your guru. But there's real rewards. There's mythical rewards for me in us in tuning into this and just give over to our imagination because I think I could really serve the highest good. Mm -hmm. So what's a question that you would like answered? And imagine I'm a genie. You can have any, any question answered. Mm -hmm. That's if you're up for it. It could be Eric that has a question. It could be anybody in here that has. Hmm. I want to make it count. Yes. <laughs> you don't want to fuck it up. Don't want to fuck this up. That was my first thought. Right. Right? That was my first thought. Is that, what does that tell you? Gosh, what's a question? Will we see humanity become more kind in the future and more loving and more cooperative? Okay, there's a better question. There's a better question. Um, around, you've know, done this with kids with adventure-based learning, that they, um, the muscle testing around mm -hmm. how, why, when, where actually aren't strong but what has strength? Mm -hmm. So if I use the term what, and we put it into that preface, what would it take for human? What's one thing that we can do that brings humanity closer to an evolution that serves the highest good, mm -hmm. perhaps? Mm -hmm. It's a lot of words in that, but we get the essence of this question. What, what does humanity need? What do we need? What can I do is a better question. Mm -hmm. Rather than what humanity needs, let's make it personal. Mm -hmm. Let's make it to you. Mm -hmm. What can Aaron do? Does that serve the highest good? Yeah, and I know it's the truth because I get a physical response. This is a good question because mm -hmm. that's what you really want to ask. What can I do? What can I do? And now I see the medicine. Okay, so say I choose to serve the highest good. Say it. I choose to serve the highest good. Do you mean it? I do. Yeah, you do. You do. I can feel that in you. And I choose to serve the highest good. And I choose to serve you. Say I choose to receive. Say I choose it. I choose to receive. I choose to be served by Kirk. I choose to be served by Kirk. Okay, cool. So I choose to serve you. And in doing so, I'm going to choose to gain some insight into the answer to this question about what, what is it that Aaron can do that, that helps humanity? What's the biggest bang for his buck so mm -hmm. far as what he can do? 
And now I'm just going to define a space. And you're going to look past me. You're going to look at me and past me. Okay. And I'm going to look at you and past you. I'm just going to define this space as having the answer. Insight. And a symbol is going to come to you. So just allow yourself to relax your focus. Allow a symbol to come. And it could be something you notice about the way I'm sitting or the colors of the walls or a sound. And then you're going to ask, what's obvious about that? When you're good and you think you're complete, let me know. When I'm good, I'll let you know. When we're both good, we'll reconvene and we'll discuss it and I'll lead off. Okay. So just take your time. So what serves, what serves, what do we need to know? What does Aaron need to know? That's, uh, and think of yourself in the third person. What does this Aaron character need to know? Yeah, I'm good when you are, but take your time. I'm good too. Yeah, yeah. okay, cool. Okay, it was pretty direct for me. Excellent. So just hold that thought for a moment. So the, I'll do it in parts. But the, the greatest part of what I got was this, I actually got a physical sensation from you. Mm -hmm. It was my heart almost leapt out of my chest with the fears that I have for humanity. Yeah. That it's it's oh, scary. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a very yeah. real fear that you have for humanity. Is it possible? It's why you do... That's why you've come into this as a mm -hmm. possible bridge to help people. But underneath it all is actually the subconscious belief, born of your stuff, which we won't go into right away, but that you have a fear that humanity is doomed, that we can't, it's too late, it's too much, too much pain in the world, and I haven't got the power in me. I can try and do a few things, but ultimately the belief is that you can't help, that we're going down a road, and that's just the way it is. And that makes you really sad. And the mm -hmm. sadness in that, now it leads me to stuff about you. But I want to hear what you got. What was the symbol and what was obvious about that? We'll do this in layers. Yeah. You know, I think going back, wh what can I do to help humanity, you know, turn the corner, become more loving, more cooperative? Don't need it fixed. Just seeing it maybe move in a new direction. That was the initial impetus of the, the beginning of this. And I don't know, I, I, I look across to my span of vision behind you, and you might not see it, but there's a human skull to your left, another human skull to your right. And immediately I got this, you know, to me that was like, okay, that's you very soon. And how much of your time do you currently just waste? You know, if you were real clear about that, that that's... I mean, hell, it could be today, for all I know, mm -hmm. I become that skull. I'm assuming even if it is when I'm 90, that's still not too far away. That goes by pretty quick. Mm -hmm. So uh, to me, it was sort of that message of what are, you, what are you doing minute by minute, day by day, that is not of service to the highest good? Mm -hmm. You know, toiling with uh, meaningless things that make you look good or feel good, or, um, and let's make it count. And let's be Aaron. Well, I want to be more open to receiving those little cues in life where you're like, mm -hmm. wow, now that I'm slowing down and, and being with each moment, I can recognize there's an opportunity to help someone. And we said it earlier, you know, be the change you want to see in the world. And I do agree. And I've thought this one through. Yeah. When I think of the world's problems, I do feel powerless. Mm -hmm. um, and, and maybe I am. Maybe I can't fix what's happening in the Middle East or mm -hmm. in Uganda. Um, but I can do my part in my little bubble, mm -hmm. you know, so I'll Very just keep, so. just keep doing that. And, and again, the reminder of those skulls being like now, not, not, don't make this an idea of like, yep. I'm going to be doing this thing. The mm -hmm. skulls kind of mean like, no, 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 now yep. do it. If you think in terms of energy and vibration, which is everything, simply time spent in that vibration of that, which you love to create, will create more of that. Jung said it best before he died. The best you can hope for is you spend time in the vibration of what you love, the emotions that you love, the emotions you want to feel, more often than you spend in your shit, which is the same stuff over and over again, mm -hmm. which basically undid all of his work on psychotherapy. Because he's basically on, this is the bottom line. Just spend more time being consciously unconsciously competent in spending time in that vibration and for you very specifically that vibration is and as i look at this carnivore skull right here you know you've got to if you being aggressively going after this it's every day spending time in being the vibration that it's going to be great that things are working out mm -hmm. believing because what it's going to do is going to bring up your doubt it's going to reveal to you that you actually have subconscious doubts 
And that is the thing that's actually propelled you, one could say, into creating this platform for you to help humanity. But they're still born of the belief that you actually don't know if it can. There's actually sadness in you because it means something about you and how we, we don't have to dig into that. We're just going to spend more time with you every day if you've got a meditative practice or whatever it is, breathing into it. I choose the end result of everything be just fine. Mm -hmm. Actually believing in humanity, mm -hmm. believing in goodwill. You say you can't change what's happening in the middle. Of it. Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. And how you do that is you stay in the microcosm, is you every day put energy into it. It's working out. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to have pressure put on you because anyone can be one with the world and they come out of Shavasana and yoga. But can they do it when the missus got pregnant and you've just been sacked? Mm -hmm. Can they do it when um, they're in the pandemic and they're in their house? Can they do it when they get sick? Under pressure, mm -hmm. fleshes out. You know, dum, 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 da, da, dum, dum. Under mm -hmm. pressure. <laughs> it's Great the song. pressure that brings it out. Yeah. And for you, the greatest path forward is you actually spending time in going, you know what? Fuck yeah. It's working out. I don't know how. Mm -hmm. that's not your job but you spend time in that vibration that's literally time accrued within a day where it's working out and you'll create more of that and you'll realize just how often in a day you have your doubts and fears that'll come to you in circumstances traffic anger something you read in the news because the reticular activating system is always looking for those bits of information that we talked about mm -hmm. so without a doubt and even just a look I look at the medicine drum just there the, the spinning wheel that is that's your medicine. You do that, dude. And it's the greatest thing you can possibly do because it will reveal to you what you don't know about yourself. Because any time that you're not in that vibration where it's working out, that's your shit. Mm -hmm. That's your stuff. And you can just be with that and eventually it'll dissipate if you keep up the work. This is the great work to mm -hmm. be and to become. I could go on and we could go into your wound too. But I, I just, mean, I want to kind of jump in on that because I, I, I got to admit, Kirk, that... That was pretty poignant. That's that what we just did together really nailed where I'm at. You know, I'll just say that for whatever reason, I've always been in the luck bubble. I'm I have most of my life, and I'm and I've always you know, I have my ups and downs, but I would say the overarching theme has always been I'm positive. I'm the optimist. It'll all be fine. In this last couple of years, when I turned fifty. I had some goals in my head that I had told myself my whole life. I'm going to be here 50. I'm going to have this much wealth. I'm going to have this much freedom. And I turned 50 and some of those things weren't on the table. And mm -hmm. I, I, I've been, I changed. I, I've been lately kind of moving, really thinking about that too much. Mm -hmm. Instead of going towards my nature, which I think my true nature is to be like, so what? Here we are today, and it's beautiful. You keep moving. And, uh, of course, this show is a new project. You know, I have my other projects that I've already built, and this one's a challenge. And you talked about pressure. I feel like I've been put under, in my unique, privileged world, a lot of pressure um, in this last year. And it really reveals, mm -hmm. you know, your weaknesses. And I, I, yeah, I am not proud of some of the negativity I've been spreading in my home and in my business wow. because I'm under pressure, and I'm not... Um, you know, automatically winning and succeeding and, oh, poor Aaron has a little bit of a, a, a step back or has mm. to take a couple steps back and he's, and he's, and I got into this pouty moods and, you mm. know, I'm not saying all the time, but enough for me to notice Good and enough for me to not be very proud of it. Mm. And, and so I just think it's really cool that you do this, what you do and we did this together and I think he nailed it like that is exactly what I need to be doing I need to get back to my I know what I am I'm not that guy yeah. I've even had days where I just look back on the day I'm like what are you doing dude you when when you you know behave that way mm -hmm. you're the guy that lifts the room up and you're bringing everybody down you know and so if my wife listens sorry babe I'm gonna I'm gonna get better I promise <laughs> I just got I just and you know maybe it took today and I've been approaching this um, message it's been coming at me I've been hearing it in little innuendos but that was pretty direct thank you for that that You're was welcome, cool mate. and as I said it's just the truth mm -hmm. it's like it's not my opinion it's not you got it as well mm -hmm. like we it was the same thing by different visions and that's the simplicity of intuition the subjective and i say this to corporations all the time you spend a fortune on objective data mm. and you don't spend a cent on the subjective i've walked into 
meetings they've gone okay this is what we're doing doing with them 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 because look at the numbers look at the numbers and I tune in and go no this the CEO is about two seconds away from a divorce and he'll lose half of it and he's going to take you into a three year quagmire or actually you go down this path and research into these other companies because you'll see that the market is going to shift I picked the pandemic before it happened I told the company what you're going to do is going to be perfect you just need to hold the tension for a couple of months and it pivoted to them being in the VR space and totally like it opening up mm -hmm. There's so much information around all the time. The subjective data is where people need to focus their attention. Mm -hmm. And it's not them. It's never circumstances. Fight the good fight. Fight yourself mm -hmm. and be with what is. And you doing that work and just you're conscious of your incompetence, but now you're going to be um, consciously competent by going, ah, okay, that old chestnut. Mm -hmm. Spending time in vibration is the greatest thing that you can do. And it will create in ways that you cannot fathom. Mm -hmm. We are not... We are energetic beings having a human experience. And I give people first-hand experiences of this, which is what I'm doing more of now, more of the keynote experiences mm -hmm. where I can give people in 90 minutes, give them an experience that dilates their pupils and they go, holy shit. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that this realm existed. And yet the part that I'm playing in creating my reality. Mm -hmm. So dude, I love the fact that you take responsibility for it. You're just going, you know what? If it's to be, it is up to me. Mm -hmm. And it is an outward action. It's inward being with what is observing myself time and vibration mm. simple yeah i just it's funny because i've always preached that mantra but i'm realizing in this tougher chapter i'm going through and again it's my relative privileged world i have to keep saying that because i realize there's and that's the other part of me it's like oh my god aaron you're are you really going to cry about the things you're going through? I know some folks that are got some real challenges, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But in my relative world, I feel like I've got a few and I haven't. And I'm realizing that this guy that was so in tune with all these ideas was in tune with them because he was, like, winning a lot. And things were going mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And then when, the, when things got a little tight, I suddenly I dropped that stuff and went to that negative side. And I'm right. like, and I'm just observing. I'm, I'm going to be gentle with myself. I am disappointed in the fact that I've done that to some degree. Mm -hmm. but, um, and I'm just acknowledging that. Like, and you, read, you just said it. You know, it's really easy to be the enlightened person in the room when your life's going perfect. Mm -hmm. But to be that enlightened person when you're facing bankruptcy mm -hmm. or divorce or whatever is on fire and still be able to stay, be that person. That's the real test. Right, that's the task. Yeah. And my work is to show people how, what they don't know about themselves and then show them their misbehaviors. They go through the dark night of the soul, literally the hero's journey, come to the other side, holy cow, I can create my reality. And the red flags are there. See, Hollywood gets it wrong. They talk about slaying of the dragon. That is not the hero's journey. In the hero's journey, you, you strike, the, the dragon becomes your ally. Your darkness becomes your ally. Why? Because it shows you your misbehavior that reminds you you're off track and goes, ah, that old chestnut again. I'm not enough. I'm not worthy. I just spent, um, I was down in Columbia in, um, in uh, a few months ago and I had the privilege of spending time in the Amazon with a tribe. And they pushed me and they put me under a lot of pressure to get my anger to build over a period of time. And I'm telling you, you know you're high when you're semi-naked face down in the Amazon, paralyzed about to drown in the puddle of your own tears and you can't move and you're having a conversation with the, the taita the shaman who one of the brothers had his face burnt off when he was a child and you're understanding every word that he's saying that's high <laughs> but what it came to was me understanding a level of self-worth you know we were born worthy we were born worthy of success born worthy of love born worthy of all that we desire but this gets in the way we look at, as a child to see how the world is and we make up this story around it. Mm -hmm. And it's not the truth. It's just the story that we become dedicated to proving because we'd rather be right than happy. Mm -hmm. Meaning of life, know thyself and it will set you free. So when I set them free with that hero's journey and then they have the opportunity, I put them under pressure. Gurdjieff did it really well. He put people under pressure. You think you're enlightened? Try spending a week at home with your family. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. Christmas time. Thanksgiving. Uh, because they push our buttons. Why? Because they help to create those very buttons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that forging of that stuff, that pressure, that accelerates the levels that you can operate at. Mm -hmm. That's enlightenment. Yeah. It's not the truth. It's just a story. It's just circumstances. It's the way it appears right now. It's an assumption. Mm -hmm. Keep holding the vibration of what it is you want to create and how you are in the world magical things happen I love that it reminds me of um, 
The Four Agreements, Don Miguel Ruiz, is one of my favorite books. I've listened to it on audio when I drive around probably two or three times a year, but he calls it the smoky mirror, you know, because the mirror reflects the truth. And he calls it the smoky mirror because when you're not in tune with that vibration, you can't see the truth. The, the, the mirror's always got a smoke moving through it, and then that's where the lies come in. And then not being honest with ourselves and just facing up to what is mm -hmm. and being okay with that and having mm -hmm. enough self-love to be okay with that. Right. You know, and that's a, it's a, that is probably more the hero's journey than slaying the dragon because you do have to utilize your dark and your light to be whole. You know, it's yeah. what forges our personality. Yeah. Don't be angry at your personality because right. it gives you character. It gives yeah. you your point of difference. But it's when it's out of control. It's like anything. When it is, it's like um, when you're a zealot about anything, it's mm. not a good thing. There's right. balance in all. Right. And when it has uh, ramifications for you, like I know people who are incredible at creating money. People are incredible at creating relationships, but terrible in other areas. Mm -hmm. And it's effortless in some areas. They can't work out in the other areas because we think it means something about us. Mm -hmm. it always comes back to that. Oh, this is where it plays out for you. And you can't judge anyone else's pain. Mm -hmm. You talk about self-love. Of all the shamans around, the, I've met hundreds of them. And they talk about, and some of them are completely full of shit. Mm -hmm. And they're pulling some, you know, wool over people's eyes. But the true ones, they're just so left alone. They're just, they'll say, Kirk, what do you see? I see it. Camera, yeah, but to the enlightened person, they know it's more than a camera. It's a portal to all throughout space and time. But then the most enlightened realize, eh, it's just a fucking camera. <laughs> they're left alone. They have that level of self-love to know they're not perfect. I've been with gurus who are chain smokers, gurus who uh, watched um, Indonesian soap operas. Uh, gurus, they're not pretending to be something they aren't. It's just that their stuff doesn't have a hold on them, and when it doesn't, they become a portal for something greater than themselves. Mm. And these miraculous healings take place. I've seen some shit that defies exp explanation firsthand and had it happen to me as well. I remember coming out of one place and I couldn't watch a TV for three months because it would fuzz, go fuzzy. Walk past a radio, couldn't get the radio to work in the car, couldn't use a key card to get into my hotel room. Phone would always drop out. Just that vibration for that period of time was so right. intense. It's like even had you know, got tested and they test and go, this is just, it's inexplainable. There's an ether that exists through it all, throughout which all things are created. Mm -hmm. And when you come to understand that and operate from that level, that the greatest thing you can do in a day is spend vibration, spend time feeling the essence of what it is you want to feel more of. Mm -hmm. Love, connection, peace. Talk to people about money. What do you want? I want $17 million exactly. Okay, why? Because I can get this and this and this. Yeah, yeah, but why? What's the feeling? And when I dig and dig and dig and dig and dig, ultimately came down with this character, came down, well, peace. I can be at peace. Well, okay, like vibration tracks like vibration. Shut the fuck up every day and meditate. Come yeah, to peace. Be at peace go now. To the, go yeah. to Vipassana for 10 days of silent retreat. Mm -hmm. If you're having a hard time getting into meditation, go and spend 10 days at a silent retreat where you're meditating 12 to 14 hours a day in complete silence. That will drop you in to the depth of meditation you need to get to. Mm -hmm. That's, I love that. You know, as you were speaking, I keep, I kept feeling, I'm, I feel like I'm developing my intuition just sitting in this room with you. <laughs> <laughs> the, as you were talking, I kept, a voice kept saying, forgiveness, forgiveness. And it reminded me of something that I, I like to talk about because I feel like oftentimes when you speak with people, myself included, I've been hung up on this one, but a lot of folks get hung up on being wronged by others and, and, and forgiveness. What, the, I have my thoughts on that, but what do you, what, I'd like you to speak towards forgiveness. Well, what's the question? Let's be specific with the question. Okay. Is everyone... Is every act and worth forgiving? And that's not the question. It's actually a better question. And hang on to it. So I choose to serve the highest good and a better question. What's the better question here? What do I need to know? <laughs> so I can hear this music in the background. Mm -hmm. And there's a beat. And it's a solid rhythm. And it's the rhythm of a heartbeat. And that rhythm of the heartbeat is it always comes back to you. That's not the problem. Forgiving someone isn't the problem. Mm -hmm. It's the deck chairs while the Titanic's sinking that you're trying to adjust. It's trying to do your makeup whilst the plane is crashing. It's not the problem. 
The problem is how you feel. You think it means something about you. Mm -hmm. You've been betrayed, you've been slighted, you've been disrespected. So your task becomes to be with how you feel. And then whether you forgive them or not doesn't matter. It's got nothing to do with them. Mm -hmm. You've got to trust people to be how they are. Mm -hmm. You've got to trust everybody. People say, trust, I can't trust everybody. I said, and there's your problem. You've got to trust people to be how they are. If you shut up for long enough, you're going to go into a business deal. How do I trust? I can trust this person to do what they've done before. They're not enlightened. Mm -hmm. They haven't doing, not doing work on themselves. They're not going to change. If this person's been married four times, you've got to trust them that you're number five and there will be a number six. Mm -hmm. Trust them to be who they are mm -hmm. unless they're on the journey. Trust them that they've betrayed you. Trust that they're going to betray you. Trust if you shut up for long enough, you know you just have an innate feeling and use symbolism to go, can I go into this relationship? Well, actually, what's going on has got nothing to do with the other person. It's got everything to do with me. I'm scared of fucking it up. Like writing the book at the moment for me. I just had an incredible insight this week and just, I am sabotaging this shit because I still haven't put the faith in the process of the ghostwriter doing their job. I'm trying to control it. I'm like, oh... Any act other than, dude, here's the end result, and the end result is it's going to work out wonderfully, and I don't know how it is. Mm -hmm. Is it? So it does, forgiveness is the wrong question. Should I forgive this person? It's the wrong question. The question is, what do I feel? Well, if I'm with it, I'm angry at them. Be with the anger. What's underneath that? Because it's just in a feeling. Well, no, I don't want to do this feeling exercise. What's that? It's another level of anger. Mm -hmm. Okay, be with that. Take the time out. Exit the conversation, say, excuse me, I need to go to the bathroom. Sit on the toilet and go, what do I actually feel? <sighs> they fucked me. They fucked me. I feel betrayed. How could they have done this to me? Be with how you feel. Because any attempt that you do in forgiving them and working on trying to forgive them doing this stuff, all it does is concrete into your subconscious that you're getting fucked. And the next time, you're going to get fucked again. Mm -hmm. So if you want to break the cycle and not be betrayed... Learn to be with how you actually feel. What's underneath that? Underneath that all, I have a memory of me as a kid. And I said to my dad, um, I put my hand on the, he said, jump the, jump the fence. And I'm like, it's electric. He's like, no, it's not. It's turned off. And I grabbed a hold of it and it shocked me. Mm -hmm. And he laughed at me. He shamed me. And then he went, come on, hurry up. And I'm like, I'm not going to touch it again. I'm not a big idiot. And he's like, no, it, it takes 10 minutes to charge back up again. So I grab a hold of it again, five years old, boom, hits me again. He pisses himself laughing, saying, that was fucking funny. And I'm like, you bastard. To the child, mm -hmm. it just, it's I've been sh not only betrayed by my father, I've been shamed for, for following him. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of shit that comes up when you sit with betrayal. Like, that's a random story. Right. But I can show you the period of Kirk's life where these events would happen. My father loved me dearly and I loved him. God bless his rested soul. But he didn't, he wasn't evolved enough to know how I was affecting me. Mm -hmm. So I forged this personality. It was like, I've got to be a good boy and I've got to do what's, do what's right, but I've got to help people. If I help people, then I'll be rewarded. But what's actually going to happen is I'm going to be not only laughed at for doing the right thing, I'm going to be shamed. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you other stories about it too. So when forgiveness is the wrong question, it always comes back to what do I think this means about me? Get out of your thoughts and into your body. My skin is crawling right now with the shame the cannot the shame is guilt is i did something wrong mm -hmm. shame is there's something wrong with me it's mm -hmm. a very important distinction mm -hmm. shame will stay with you until you die unless you come to be with i feel emasculated i feel shame i feel so it's nothing to do with this person not forgiving me mm -hmm. and i guarantee those people who talk about i've got to forgive this person i guarantee that they have more people in their life always that they get fucked mm -hmm. they've got to forgive this person in that it doesn't happen to me that way but it happens to that particular person in their pattern that plays mm -hmm. out. Does that make sense? <laughs> I'm loving this. That's a, that's a question I ask a lot of people that are deep thinkers and like to, you know, give thought to these questions. And I've asked that to a lot of people. I've never, and I, that totally connected for me. Yeah, because if you're sitting in the vibration of, I've got to find a way to forgive the wrong thing that this community did to me or this person or this organization, 
like you said before, and I believe this, what you're vibrating at is what attracts towards you. So as you're working on that all the time, you're just attracting the next person, organization, or, or whatever situation that you'll have something happen that deserves you to work on forgiving them. So like, yeah, so bringing it back inside and, and figuring out where that's out. Now that doesn't take away the fact that we all need boundaries. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. burn me once, shame on you, burn me twice, shame mm -hmm. on me. That's That stands. Because I, I found, and I agree, and the one thing I've, I've seen is I think sometimes people attach forgiveness with allowance, meaning mm -hmm. I'm never going to forgive so-and-so that did that to me because if I were to do that, someone else would do it to me. And I guess I'm getting where you're at, which I, my response to that has, has been, no, no, no. As you hold on to the resentment for what they did to you, you'll just mm -hmm. attract the next character that does right. that to you again. Right. So the, the, it's not even forgiveness. It's, um, it's kind of awareness and self-love, which yes. the forgiveness just falls from that. It's not even an act. It's just right. you getting so clear with the idea that it doesn't matter what that person did. It's got nothing to do with them. Right. I, am I going to allow them in my business life anymore? No. They've shown what they are. I know what they are. I'm okay with what they are. But at the same time, to sit over here and work on forgiveness, it's bringing more of those. Yeah, I guess we ended up saying the same thing because that's been my kind Very of mantra. Yeah, that is absolutely. It's got nothing to do with the other person. What's the... It's got everything to do with the way that it makes you feel. Mm -hmm. So be with how you feel. Mm -hmm. Let that go out of your body so you can spend time in a different vibration. Mm -hmm. And it's not the op people say, well, I'll give it the op opposite vibration. I'll have an affirmation that says, I will not be betrayed. I will not be betrayed. That's energy in betrayal. I've got a better choice for you. I choose the end result of loving how I am in the world. See the difference? Mm -hmm. One keeps you in that vibration of betrayal. Mm -hmm. The other one is uh, that got nothing to do I just don't attract those people anymore in fact I forget times when I'd even attracted that anymore because why because I love how I am in the world I'm present I'm connected I'm I have depth and you know what I need to lighten up that is time well spent in a day and we don't do a moment of it even meditation by itself is great at neutralizing it's great at becoming silent to be with what is but then there's the work once you're empty then what do you want the cup to be flavored with? Mm -hmm. Okay, I choose this. It's true, man. You know, when I was a young man, um, for various reasons, I felt like I was wronged by society, by my um, peers, by culture, church. Hmm. I was, grew up Catholic. I saw all kinds of hypocrisy in the church. Uh, parents got divorced. I, I, I became relatively angry young man. Punk rock was my solution. Anarchy. Hmm. Was my solution oh, really? and just burn it all fucking down <laughs> you know and that served me quite well I, I i i made new groups a new group of friends who were similar minded we created deep bonds and and it also protected me from feeling a lot of the feelings i didn't really want to feel and life went on and i went into the military and i couldn't really be a punk rock kid anymore i kind of tried it in the beginning mm -hmm. and they set me sh pretty straight pretty quick i realized whoa these dudes aren't fucking around. Like, uh -huh. I, I better play the game here. Right. And so I did. But I didn't really heal that punk rock anarchist inside. Hmm. So then I got out of the military. I decided to become a tattoo artist. And lo and behold, I won't go through all these stories. But for about four years, I wound up in the most crazy, violent, scary situations. Hmm. And and I, I remember at the time being like, what? Why does this keep happening to me? And then I eventually opened my first tattoo studio. And I don't, again, I don't want to get into the details because I don't like, I don't want to, it just, I have my reasons. But more of this stuff was coming in my, into my mm -hmm. business and around me. And I, 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 there was idle threats being made. And I, again, I've, I've got this, this violent intentioned people around me. And I'm like, here it is again. And I remember... It was one night I was upstairs at my first location and I just was, I just snapped. I fell to the ground, I bawled, and I just looked at the sky and I asked, God or whoever is behind the curtain, like, I'm a nice guy. I treat people well. I really do. I may have made a couple accidental mistakes, but why is this being served up? And I'll never forget the intuition, which I think a lot of people who are very, very religious would call it God's voice. Mm -hmm. Maybe it is God's voice. Maybe it's in, coming out of me. I don't really care. Some truth just shot through my brain. And, and really, 
all that punk rock stuff that I thought was gone, that anger at the church, anger at my parents' divorce, anger, at, it just it just went right up through my head, like right in my forefront. And I looked at it, and I and this and the um, the meaning was just clear and present to me. You haven't let go of this, mm. and because you haven't dealt with this, you're angry. Mm. And because you're angry, I had violence in me. I wanted to. I punched holes in walls before. I'm not really a guy to hurt people, but I'm probably a guy back then you wouldn't want to push because I'd probably strike back. You know, mm. I had violence in me, mm. and what was showing up around me in those years? Violence. So this is. I shit you not. So at this time, there was a particular threat that was happening around me that I thought could really shut down my business. I was having a baby at the time. I just bought my first house. I was like, holy crap, this is a real threat to my livelihood. And I had that night and it might've been three days later, that thing vanished. And I, I don't want to get into the details of the story because it would reveal too much of stuff. I, it's just not, maybe not even, it's just, I don't want to get into it, but that thing, it disappeared. Hmm. Those people, that problem, right. Right. just walked away. I didn't have to tell them to go away or anything. Right. They just left. And I've never had that type of stuff happen in my tattoo career since that day. Awesome. How long ago was that? I guess it would be about 20 years ago. Yeah, right. Well, no, no, no. Yeah. I had been, yeah, 18 years ago. Yeah, right. How like fortunate that. are you to come to that moment? That um, And a lot of people talk about those crystal clear moments where the truth was there for them. Mm-hmm. And they decided differently, let it go. We'll go through it to be with what is. It is, that's where it's at, to be yeah. with what is. Yeah, I, I'd forgotten about that story. I mean, you kind that's of, cool. you talking right now, I was like, holy shit, I remember. Yeah, it goes back to your thing, like whatever you're, whatever you're having dealt with, you're just gonna attract more of it into your life. And I see a lot of that with professional fighters. Often, not always, of course, but often they're so good at fighting or violence extreme violence because they were scared mm. you know i remember mike tyson saying this many many years ago um you know i've learned to fight when i was a kid because i was scared because i was scared i had to mm. i had to and that's how they deal with feeling scared yeah but what it does is it keeps you in a life of fighting yeah it literally drags you into a career where you're scared stepping in the only way you can deal with that is to roll let the eyes roll back and let the fear of God come in you to express yourself in rage. Mm -hmm. So it creates more of the same thing. You know, mm -hmm. the greatest warriors throughout history are the ones who never had to fight. Yeah. Simple yeah. as that. Because they were with what is. They developed the skills for whatever reason. But, uh, you know, it's, it's great to have a, a martial art. The marshalling, the art of marshalling energy mm -hmm. is actually the term. Mm -hmm. And there's honor and discipline in that as opposed to the way that I'm not, I don't appreciate the way fights have become within UFC there's like you know, the braggedness the you know honor is gone mm. therefore it is devoid therefore it is not an art form it is mm. simply a slugfest it's a battle of angers a battle of rage there's nothing attractive about that yeah I've gone back and forth on it I I can never get all and I have so many friends that are deep in that community so I want to support the community you know I tattooed Joe Rogan sleeves and mm -hmm. And I do appreciate, I know some of those athletes, and I do look at that sport as, wow, that's, that's about as well-rounded of an athletic person as you mm -hmm. could possibly become as the MMA mm -hmm. fighter. I mean, right. there's no weapons, there's no tools, it's right. just you versus him. Mm -hmm. You can use anything within, they got a couple rules so no one loses eyeballs or gets their dicks ripped off or something. Yeah. But, but beyond those rules, it's anything kind of mm -hmm. goes. And I, I respect that, and I respect the art form in that regard. And, but and and I do go back and forth because of some of the banter the, that they put behind the show. Sometimes they're really highlighting the. Right. And I totally like, understand the the need to hype things up because you get the attention there. Right. And there's been a couple of characters in our history that obviously have have blown up because of that ability to entertain outside of the ring. Right. But that doesn't change their ability to fight. I can help. I you know have fight athletes. It can help them dramatically. Same as race car drivers. Can help them dramatically, because. 1% increase in physical ability these days is a huge jump. 1% increase in skill level is a huge jump. But yet their mental game, their, their energetic game, the luck, 
is currently playing around three or four or five percent, mm-hmm. whilst the other two are up around the you know they're ninety seven ninety eight percent of what's humanly capable mm-hmm. at this point in time, and yet their energetic game is so small, and that's the great cheat code of some of the great ones, is they're not passing this knowledge on. They don't even, some of them don't even know that they're doing it, mm-hmm. but there is a bubble that exists in which you can get in as an athlete that transcends your physical skill set. Yeah, you know I've seen great champion athletes have horrible careers because of this thing they they were the best but they didn't get the opportunity people say luck is where preparedness and opportunity meet no luck is born of how you are in the world and when you're a certain way in the world you draw to you the opportunities where you're perfectly placed at that perfect time to Mm -hmm. do that Mm -hmm. I've seen people who are perfectly prepared their whole life and never got the opportunity I've seen people get opportunities and they weren't prepared Mm-hmm. It's not. It's a misnomer. Someone said it and it sounded cool. It's bullshit. Mm-hmm. It's not the truth. It's not where pre- opportunity meet, meets preparedness. It's a byproduct of how you are in the world, and the outcome isn't luck. It's simply a good fortune that is just a no-brainer because it's cause and effect with how you are. Yeah. Be one of the best F1 drivers in the world. If you've got no luck, you're not going to go with the right team. You're not going to have the right car at the right time. Mm. Mm. Um, same with fighting you're not going to get your opportunities you're going to get that one lucky punch the other guy gets in no matter how good you are Mm -hmm. he's going to sneak it in you're going to break a bone in your hand to put you out for 12 months this is the this is the last bastion of true excelling within sports is the realm of what I'm talking about as Mm -hmm. energetic creatures and we had this as warriors eons ago and we've lost it yeah yeah, we did. We 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 left the sacrament. We left um, cultural um, tribal living, mm-hmm. where these things were revered. Right. For I don't know, I'm no historian, but I think most of human history. And then we got a hold of um, science. And no offense to science, I think it's great that we have laser beams and heart surgeons and spaceships. I love all that stuff. I think it probably will serve us if we live long enough, this species, we're gonna need those things. But during that pursuit of science, it seems to me we just completely dropped plant medicine, ritual, the honor of the sacred spirit, you know, listening to intuition and realizing Mm -hmm. this is just as valid as what that computer tells you. Yes, we need data, but we also need to quiet ourselves and feel our way through things. And um, I do feel the change coming, though. You you, you know, guys like you, what you're talking about is becoming more popular. The books, some of them, as I've mentioned, more and more people are reading them. And science is starting to support what the mystics have always known. And that, too. So we go, oh, actually, we have science that backs it up now. Yeah. The particle can be in two places at the same time. Actually, what's taking place here, I mean, it just, it, when it comes full circle like that, when science ratifies it, that's when the masses go, oh, okay, I can believe that. It's mm-hmm. like when the doctor says, you're going to die in six months. Most people die within six months mm-hmm. because it's that word of authority right. that we defer to. But there is a marriage between the two we need to evolve to something different than what we are and it's using the past and it's using the future together mm-hmm. it's science and mysticism at the same time yes that is the future for and this future for us for this. and it changes on an individual level once we change on an individual level that has the ripple effect that you want yes back to my signature intuition that i brought into the table today <laughs> i'm going to take that one home with me thank, thank you. you well God, dude. I mean, this. unfortunately, the, I'm being told that I should try to keep these episodes under an hour and a half. I don't know where we're at. I think we're pushing on it. And I, I hate to cut a guy like you off because, geez, I feel like I could do like eight hours with you, you know? We have some fun, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm right. digging it, man. This is, this is you're, you're an amazing human being. I'm oh, really thanks, stoked you made it here today. And, and maybe... Could, could you talk a little bit like, like how does this work I mean are you for hire do if I, it's a, can an individual work with you or, is, or are you only servicing the corporations and the bigger group type stuff right. what are you doing and how do people connect and sure. learn more about your world sure um, well in choosing to serve the highest good my model has changed somewhat now where I do a lot more keynote addresses keynote to companies to corporations to sports teams mm-hmm. to um uh, turn up for 90 minutes and people get an experience rather than yabbity yabbity someone talking about I did it and you did it too 
the same old horse shit. No, give people a visceral experience where I can take them through three different exercises that 90 minutes that blow the doors off what they know. Mm. And then at the back end of that, corporations tend to sign me to say, okay, well, come in and tell us, use your skills to show us what we don't know about the way that we operate. And I won't work with a company or a team unless I'm working with the CEO or the general manager because mm-hmm. they have a cascading effect down across everybody else. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on the, but without taking away from the average Joe, um, we're creating a, a 21 day challenge mm-hmm. that will be available within the month where people can simply, for a small amount of money, every day show up. Okay. And they'll have a chance to spend more time in the vibration of shit just working out in their lives. Mm-hmm. And if they can't spend time in that, it's because their stuff's coming up. And what they have the opportunity to do then is to see and feel and be with what's coming up. Mm-hmm. And that will set them free. Ultimately, love just keep people unconsciously competent. To spend more time in joy and love and depth, and connection, okay. and working out in peace. That would be awesome. But it's going to be provocative for people. And the 21 day challenge is designed exactly for that. Mm. So that'll be available shortly at a very low price point. So the average show can just simply plug on in at his own pace and give it a crack. Um, that's saying I'm not here to, to push anything, mate. I have more than enough work. And, and mm-hmm. uh, But shortly the book will come out probably by Christmas, the luck bubble, and I have more stuff on there for the average show just to go, what is this shit? For, you know, Bert, the Mac driver from Boise, Idaho, to go, might be something to this shit because I don't understand what just happened but that resonates with me Yeah. and I don't have to force change I don't need people to be any certain way it's just an offering to the world and if they want to take it up on that then I'd love to offer it to them um, yeah that's the way it works so the luckbubble.com will be the website that has all the offerings on that okay. if anyone wants to go to that um, Instagram I haven't been active for a period of time whilst I create this work uh, the book and the um uh, but that'll be coming back up. Instagram, YouTube. There's a lot of stories on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Apparently went viral on TikTok. I didn't even know I was on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my friend posted that up. and Because uh, it's just elements of truth. So if it works for some people, if, it's a, if the student's ready, the master appears. and It's just there for them. It's just an offering. That's awesome. That's a, then that has to be the way. With the work you do, that's the only way to look at it. If you looked at it any other way, I'd be suspicious. Mate, if I push it, whenever I, I've learned this, whenever I push it to try and make money go after it, shit goes down. I just need to be led and just do what I'm told. Yeah. Okay, what serves the high? Okay, shit. All right, but now after 20 years, I can call myself a master of the art and I've literally changed thousands of lives. I can really help. Yeah. Great things. Babies. Um, actually, it was Ian's... Uh, Ian's wife, our mutual friend, who uh, wrote me a, a testimony and said, Kirk put a baby in me. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's going to take a little bit. We need to finesse that a little bit. But I, I love the sentiment, which is, you know, it was, that's what she wanted. We just tuned into it and just went, well, and it was there. I've done that dozens of times now with, with some women who couldn't have children. Oh, okay. I get what you're saying now. First, when you said that joke, I, I get what you're doing now. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's cool. It's saved lives. It, it really has literally saved lives. Like impetus to go, okay, this needs to be done. This person needs to know this. And they go do that. And literally, they're there to resuscitate that person. They're there to administer that EpiPen. So it's, it's beyond fathom. And it never ceases to amaze me. I still get a kick out of intuition reading into it and going, I don't know how I know this, but blah, 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 blah. Yeah, right. And they go, huh? And they look into it. I was only just talking recently about this um, client that I had, and I said, you need to look into your name. You know, we just talked about someone's name. Names are important. Mm-hmm. Imagine that your name has a meaning, which it does, your mm-hmm. first name, and that's had an energy in it. And when people come to, to own that part of their name, ten, 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 things tend to flow along for them. Mm-hmm. There's one character I got, I said, that's not your name. She said, it's my name. I said, it's not your name. I said, actually, you were adopted. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I wasn't adopted. I said, you're adopted, and you're... you're you need to go back to where you were born and that, because you actually have a lineage of, of indigenous heritage. They're like, what are you talking about? This is bullshit. And I stormed out of the session. And I record all, all the sessions. And uh, then she called me back up. And she said, I was adopted and I wasn't told. And my family's actually from, I don't know where they are. And I said, I know where they are. I said, they're in this particular area. I just said, get that you've got to go there and, and you'll, you'll find them. And she's like, yeah, whatever. And she didn't do it. Anyway, years later, I got a phone call saying, you're not, you don't know if you remember me, you didn't read on me. And I went to this particular area in Australia and this, this Aboriginal lady was sitting outside a shopping centre with a shopping and she looked up and she said, you be Becky Johnson's girl. This woman's like, I beg your pardon? She said, you be Becky Johnson's girl. She gave you up for adoption. I was like, what are you talking about? Anyway, she followed it. 
And that old timer, she knew. Mm. Indigenous peoples see, hear, and feel beyond that which we can, because they're closer to connection to spirit yeah. than we are. Yeah. And she was right. Hmm. That's cool. She was right. So people, I could tell you hundreds of stories, but do the work. Do the work on yourself. Yeah. Open do, the door. do the work is right. You know, I, I think we started us off by you really driving home the idea that it's important to ask yourself what you're feeling and why. Why am I feeling that way? Mm-hmm. And go a layer deeper. Get to the next feeling. Well, what, what would that be coming from? Mm-hmm. And get to the next one. You know, this is the inner work. This is the, the end of looking outside of yourself for the reasons your life isn't the way you would want it to be. That's super easy. We could all do that. The government, the... Uh, my boss, my neighbor, right. that's who it was, you know, that's yeah, it, are we it's all, the man. Hey, good luck finding anybody out there that doesn't have sh- shitty folks that did shitty things to them, okay, hey, no one gets out of this thing without some of that, mm-hmm. but you're, I think, yeah, I think that was the biggest of all the things you said today, for me at least, was, and I do it, but I think I'm going to get back on it with a little more vigor after our conversation today, so I thank right. you for that. You're welcome, bud. It's been great. Awesome. Thanks for your time. Loved it. All right, everybody. You heard it here first. Theluckbubble.com. Everything Kirk. Everything Kirk is on there. Pretty much. All right. Pretty much. All right. Um, And you didn't give the Instagram handle. What was it? Uh, The Luck Bubble. Uh, At The Luck Bubble. At The Luck Bubble. And YouTube. It's that The Luck Bubble as well. Okay. Um, It's just The Luck Bubble. All right. Easy enough to remember. Simple, simple. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, Keep those comments coming. Keep those suggestions coming. And also, let me know who you want want me to have on the show. You want more stuff like this? Whatever. I'm, I'm here to be of service. What do you guys want? Let me know. And that's it for today. Take care.